everybody. Happy Wednesday. Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Um, so a little bit of real simple, fun meal today. We are going to do, it's almost like if a, a, a Reuben and a patty melt had a baby. That's what this would be. But there's tons of options. I'm using ground pork. You could use ground beef. You could use ground chicken. Um, you could use any ground meat that you could fathom. You could do it just strict, straight vegetables, however you want to do it. So a lot of options here how this could be made. So the first thing, I had about a pound and a half of ground pork. I split it into four um, balls. And I made the balls kind of like an uh, oblong because when we smash them, we want them to fit on our bread. I'm using rye bread. Kind of a funny story is that the we are a little low on rye bread because you know we're kind of working in a delivery world here. And Liz didn't know that you know this is obviously my, our house, and so it's functioning as a house and our little uh, TV studios or whatever we want to call it right now. And Liz didn't realize that the rye bread was going to be used today for the show. So she ate some rye bread today. So we don't have quite enough rye bread to make all of our patty melts. So I'm going to demo one on rye bread. And then for our dinner, we'll probably have them on a roll or wheat bread or an English muffin, whatever we could kind of get up. So we season these with salt and pepper. I'm going to put my pan over about a medium high heat. Now, you, different sizes of pans work here. Uh, you know, you could do a couple at a time, but an easy way to do it is it set up a tray next to your pan. And so if you're doing one or two or three at a time, as you're getting the meat seared, you could move it to here. So then when you build your patty melts and if you need to keep it warm in the oven, you could set an oven at like 200 degrees. That way you could get the whole family set up. You don't have to cook all four at once or three at once or six at once or however many that you're doing. The other things that we have is I have some sauerkraut here. A lot of people were asking in the questions, if I don't have sauerkraut, what could I use? You could use onions, you could use cabbage, you could use different vegetables, you could use leafy greens, all that stuff works. So as the pan is getting hot, I'm just gonna put the slightest amount of oil on the bottom of the pan, just to barely coat it, nothing crazy. Um, and I'll show you why that is in a second. We want a little bit of it, like it, to adhere just a bit so it caramelizes before we flip it. Um, the other thing that we're going to do is I have a, another pan here that we're going to use to smash. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the bottom of that pan so it doesn't stick to our burger when we smash it. So we're going to take our burger. Almost there. Are you using 80-20 or 90-10? I never, 90-10 is not an option for me with any ground meat. The, like the, for me, the two worst words in the English language when it comes to burgers together are lean beef or lean pork or lean whatever. You need 20% fat minimally in a burger, in a sausage, 20 to 30%. That's what makes it delicious. The fat melts out, but all remember about 70% of the flavor in meat is in the fat. When you start pulling out the fat and the fat melts out, it's not basting the meat as it's going through. So you end up with burgers or meatballs or whatever you're using that are not only dry, but don't have as much flavor. It's a loss, loss situation for everybody. All right, so now we take our patty and you could hear the sear. So this is ready and we're just gonna place it in the pan. As soon as we place it in the pan, we're gonna take our other pan that we put oil on the bottom and we're gonna smash it so it's a little bit bigger than our bread because this is gonna shrink a little bit. So we want it to be a little bit bigger than our bread so when it shrinks, we have meat all the way across the bread. We're gonna just let this do its thing. Because this is pork and obviously you wanna cook it all the way through as opposed to a burger where you could do a temp, I'm gonna put a lid on here for two reasons. One, you guys can't hear me when it's sizzling. So I, everybody will say, I can't hear you, it's sizzling. So this will reduce the sound of the sizzle. It's still gonna get the caramelization on bottom and I don't have to worry about oil splattering all over the place. So in this situation, a lid works just fine. Now, the bread. We have rye bread. Any kind of bread will work, a bun will work. I When I think of 
of Reuben, and when I think of a patty melt, I think of rye bread. So as you guys maybe saw when we made grilled cheese sandwiches, whenever I'm toasting bread in a pan, I like to do a little bit of mayo as opposed to butter. It has some egg in there and oil, and it just toasts up better to me than what people think is like a traditional butter situation. So we put the mayo down, spread it end to end. Oh, I'm on Michael, get there, all right. Eileen's oh, wondering if you don't have a cast iron, would you say nonstick or copper for this? Um, either would work. Any, any pan will work in this situation. Cast enamel, cast iron, copper, nonstick, stainless. You know, you want a pan that, re that releases decently because you're going to have to, you know, obviously flip the burger. And I'm actually going to put a little bit of water in the pan after the burger's done to wipe it out so then we could toast in it too. So that way, I mean, you could use two pans to do this, but I hate burning two pans because Liz won't admit it, but I'm doing all the dishes during quarantine. I'm the dishes guy. So it's a one pan job today. What else we got for questions, Liv? Um, Nicole's wondering if it tastes like mayo when you fry it on the bread. It does not taste like mayo when you fry it on the bread. It just, um, the, the, the fat content and it helps it toast nice and evenly and it works really well. So it doesn't taste like mayo though. So then, look, this is, we have mayo up, mayo up. I flip this over on here so I can now put mustard on this side. I'm using a Cleveland mustard. It's a, a ballpark mustard, a brown mustard. You could use Dijon, you could use yellow, you could use grainy. If you don't like mustard, don't use mustard. All that is legal. Now the other thing that I'm gonna do is, this is an optional thing, but when we did a little, I did a test one of these today that we had. Liz is eating a little bit of meat during quarantine, which is making my job easier. And she's like, I think pickles would be a good addition. Um, so I'm gonna take some pickles and I'm gonna slice them up and we're gonna put some pickles down. Yeah. And this is a sweet pickle, but I, I wouldn't, in this situation, and I love sour, um, I would probably wouldn't go sour pickle because we're gonna get the sourness from the kraut already. So kind of this is a sweet sour situation, which is nice. And now I'm gonna take two pieces of cheese and place them on the pickle side. Mm. Right, this is a pretty good. What do we got for questions, Liv? Um, Rosemary is wondering if she could use Italian sausage out of the casing instead of ground pork. 100% it would be delicious. So if I was using Italian sausage out of the casing, maybe then you don't go sauerkraut. Maybe you go roasted peppers or peppers and onions would be delicious. But you could still, and then maybe fresh mozzarella or provolone. And then, but you could still use the patty melt kind of technique, but you could mix it up to go with the Italian sausage. So, I mean, I think that's kind of the beauty about everything that we've been doing for the past couple weeks. It's like, I want you guys to go, okay, I get the method. I understand how he's making this. Now I can put anything in there that I have in my pantry or that fits my personal tastes. Because at the end of the day, I cook for my tastes. So you should cook for your taste because you're the ones eating it. So you always want the food to taste how you want it to taste. Some people like things sweeter, some people like things sour, some people like acidity, some people like things spicy. But if you learn the technique, you could make it any way you want to fit you, and then everyone's happy. All right, let's come it off. And you can see how much that shrunk. And now we give it a flip. But you see how it still has that great crust? That's really what you want. Crust is king in this situation. And I'm going to put the lid on and let a little bit of crust develop on that other side now too. And then as that's happening, or even before, you could take a nice spoonful of whatever your favorite sauerkraut is if you have sauerkraut. and put it right on top of your patty so it starts to heat up. Ellie is wondering what would be a good side to serve with, with this dish? Potato salad, potato chips, anything that you love with a burger. If you want to make get crazy and make french fries, you can make french fries. 
There's a lot of good French fry recipes. I think I even did my fries on um, on the Food Network Kitchen app, you know, so it shows you how to blanch the fries for some little bit of fat and then rinse them and cool them and fry them again for like those super crispy restaurant style fries. Sweet potato fries if you wanted to bake them. A lot of people like doing regular baked fries. I'm not a baked fry guy. Um, I know everybody's gonna say fries in an air fryer. I don't own an air fryer, so, but I heard that they're delicious, so that's certainly an option too. Any of, I think any of those options work very nice. Um, Megan's wondering, for the onions, would you just sweat them or could you caramelize them? You could sweat them, caramelize them, or put them on raw. Whatever fits your fancy, Megan. All of those things work. All right, now I'm going to take my other two pieces of cheese. And we'll put those on top. And we'll put the lid down. Lori's wondering, she says she thought by putting the lid on, it would steam the meat rather than brown it. Is that not true? Well, no, you, as you saw, the meat was still getting very brown as we were cooking it. If I complete, and if this was something that I wanted to cook mid-rare or rare, I would not do that. But there is a little steam release thing there, but it's, <clears throat> the, the meat is still caramelizing underneath. It's just speeding up the cooking process and cooking it through. And actually to help melt the cheese, I like to take a little bit of water, put it in the pan, and now put the lid on. So what that does is it builds up a lot of steam, which is really going to get all the cheese melted completely through. This is and kind of all that fat starts to work its way back into the burger. This is an old diner restaurant trick. Like at our uh, at our B Spot restaurants, right before the burger's done, we put the cheese, we put everything on, we take a lid, we put it on, then we squirt a little water underneath, and it melts everything down, and it kind of brings that fat back up, and it makes it a very happy place for the hamburger. Um, some fans are wondering if you were using, you wanted to replace this with a vegetable, what vegetable would you use? I think a mushroom would work great, eggplant would work great, um, anything that has a little bit of a steaky consistency would work really well. Alright, so I'm turning the pan off real quick, we're going to take our lid off again. Put this lid here, and then I'm going to take my burger. And look at, see, that's wow. really gooey. The cheese is totally melted. You can see that's what we want. I'm going to see any of these other goodies that kind of fell off. We'll kind of pop those back on top. And then to get a, two things I want to do here now. I want to get like a quick wipe out of my pan. And I want to get some of that residue off the bottom. So I'm just going to pour a little water in. And this is cooling it down a touch too because I don't want it quite as hot when I put the bread in. So I'm going to let this water kind of <clears throat> pull up everything and it's like almost cleaning the pan and then when it's almost gone we'll just give it a quick wipe out with a paper towel. Now be careful when you're doing this. Obviously this is hot. Um, obviously you know if you have too much fat in your pan it's going to splatter. That's one of the reasons I just barely brushed a little bit of uh, fat in there because we didn't want the big splatter situation happening. So, we turn this off, and I'm just going to wipe this out. You could do this with, if you want to wear a glove, when you do this, like a, a hot glove, a mitten, whatever you call those things. <laughs> we never, chefs never use those, they just use towels, and my hands are pretty seasoned to heat, so I don't worry about that. So that's all wiped out now. So you got your wiped out pan. Ralph is wondering if he could do this sandwich on a grill. Yeah, for sure. No problem. You're, you're going to still want to use the lid technique um, on a grill because you're going to want to get everything nice and melted, but 100%. So now look, we're going to brush a little more oil in. We're going to take the pickle cheese side and put that down. Then we're going to take the burger and put it on top. You can see I could have even pushed the burger down a little thinner to get slightly better coverage on the bread, but it's going to still be good. And then we put our other piece of bread right there. So we got cheese on both sides, and we're going to let things start to toast. What do we got for questions, Liv? Oh, of course everyone is checking in with Norman. What's he up to? Norman? Norman, uh, Norman's in timeout again today. He was just wound a little bit tight today. Um, as puppies do. So again, 95% of the time he is good. 
uh, but today he was slightly on high wipe. It was um, it was raining this morning and this afternoon, so he had like I usually wake up, try to take him for a walk. Afternoon, take him for a walk. Nighttime, take him for a walk. So his his playtime, walk time has been reduced today. So Norman is a little bananas. You know, I have always had up to Norman. I've always had mastiffs and uh, <clears throat> bulldog breeds. Very lazy. Terriers, a lot of energy. <laughs> like people keep saying to me, boy, chef, you've lost a lot of weight. What are you doing? I'm like, keeping up with Norman. That's what I'm doing. Okay, so see how that's nice and golden brown there? Yeah. And that's mayonnaise. It's crunchy. It's golden brown. I'm telling you, once you do mayonnaise, you'll never go back. You'll never go back. I'm going to put the lid on real quick. Um, just to get that the, that other cheese melted as the other side's browning. I've turned the heat down to about low now, so this toast is slower on the other side, and we're in a good place. What else we got for questions, Libs? Juanita is wondering if you let the meat rest here. Um, yeah, you know, in a patty melt situation, not so much. We, we kind of pulled it. It rested for a little bit when we were getting the bread going, kind of got the juices back in. And then we're putting it back on just to kind of melt and toast and bring everything together. So not as necessary as a steak or a chicken or a turkey um, in a situation like this for the patty melt. Not as big as a deal. And then if some of those juices run out, they're going to run into the bread, which is still going to be delicious. Um, Emily is wondering if you have to grease the pan when you have the mayo on the bread already. No, you could just... The, you saw, I just took a brush and I just brushed I mean literally probably a half a teaspoon just to make sure that you know my pan was coated and I wasn't just going straight on steel like in a non-stick pan maybe people wouldn't do it but a little bit of oil is going to add a touch of flavor too um, so no no harm no foul there all right so let's see how we're doing all right looking good I was talking a little bit too much but that's still we lost a pickle. Acceptable? No, we didn't watch this. <laughs> Magic. No, it was intentional. I'm waiting for this one to fall out too. Here's a little, this one's like dangling on the edge. It's going to be mine in a second. Um, we, oh, we have a couple people wondering what is the tool that you're using right now? And would oh, you recommend? this is, this is, all right. So this is a restaurant spatula. It's called a fish spatula. This is the spatula you want at home. Like, sometimes people send me stuff. Uh, like, the spatulas that they sell in kitchen stores are so ridiculous and cumbersome. Like, how about the grill spatulas that are like this big? I can't the, even get it in the frame. Or the grill so tongs bad. that are like this big. <laughs> like, I mean, tongs. This should be the length of tongs. Maybe this long, but not any longer. This is, should be the size of a spatula. No bigger, no smaller. I have one in here that Liz likes to use. And I mean, what is this thing? It's This isn't a spatula, it's a shovel. It looks like what you get the ice on your car off. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I'm going to get rid of it when she gets it. Um, but this is what you want. I mean, it's got, it's the perfect size. It holds everything. It's very thin, which allows you to get under and, and lift stuff off surfaces. Does it scratch the pans though? <clears throat> well, this, you know, I don't use nonstick pans. Or very rarely do I use nonstick pans. So a cast enamel pan, I mean this kind of pan is fine. A, a pan with stainless steel interior is fine. A, a carbon steel is fine. Uh, uh, cast iron is fine. So as long as you're not using a lot of nonstick cookware, which I don't really like anyhow, um, there's just no need for it. I'm just putting a little more water in the cleanup so it's easier to clean up later. All right. So burgers out. Another thing, if you have a little bit of Thousand Island or Russian dressing, great option for a dipping sauce. I know everybody likes to dip. Sinclair was wondering. Yeah, a little dipping sauce. So, and if you don't, just mix a little ketchup with a little mayonnaise and a little mustard and uh, some chopped pickles and relish or whatever, and you're good. All right, let's cut this sucker. All right, see, that's what we're talking about. Cooked all the way through. Totally gooey, gooey. The pickles were a great call by Liz. Well, Liz is very smart. I mean, we're, we're not uh, 
other than the spatula situation, she rarely makes mistakes, which um, we've been together about 30 years, and trust me, I, I think I was right twice, but I didn't even admit that I was right, because <laughs> I didn't want to didn't get in trouble for being right. <laughs> but she's been right in... in in almost 30 years, she's been right 99.9% .9 of the time. And I'm fine with that. That's all good. All right. That's how you have a happy marriage. Absolutely. Oh, see, and this is what I love. Mm. Cheese for days. Let's go for the dip. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Pickles. I love sauerkraut. These are some of my buddies in Cleveland. They make one called Nar Nar. It's a spicy sauerkraut. It's like the, it's Cleveland kimchi essentially. It's sauerkraut with a good bite to it. But whatever your favorite sauerkraut is works great. You can make sauerkraut at home. We have a lot of time on our hands right now. Maybe you want to ferment your own, go online. Tons of recipes how to ferment sauerkraut. Um, <clears throat> and it's a fun little project. I love doing it. This is so good. And this will be good with any meat with any veg. Quite frankly, if you just wanted to do a grilled cheese with the Swiss, the sauerkraut pickles, the mustard, and the French onion dip, it would be fantastic. It would be really good. All right, one more question, Liv, because I gotta finish this. Um, so a fan was wondering, if they were making a bunch of these patties, would you just leave them in the oven to keep warm while the other ones were cooking? I would keep making them, putting them on a tray, and then just hold them in the oven and they'll hold fine. But set your oven very low, like one, what's the lowest setting on the oven, let's see. 150, 150, 175, just keep them warm. Keep making them, hold them. When you have as many as you need to feed your family, call everybody in, put them on the table, they're gonna hold up fine, especially if you don't use that weird 90-10 meat. <laughs> All right guys, so we're gonna be here for the rest of April, which we're very excited about. Um, <clears throat> Food Network Kitchen Facebook page every day at five o'clock. <clears throat> if you, we would love you to take pictures of anything that you make and we would love to see it. So if you tag at Food Network or tag at Chef Simon with a Y, we'll see them. And also hashtag, is that how you do it, Liv? Yeah, totally. Is that how the young kids are doing it? So hip. So hip. Um, hashtag Simon with a Y dinners and we will see it all. So. I'm going to finish my porky melt or my Reuben melt or whatever the heck we're going to call this thing. But have a great day. Dish at a time, day at a time. I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.